Welcome to Emergency Chaos, where we talk about tips and tricks to make you a better ER nurse. Today, we are going over the workup of patients who present with altered mental status. We will briefly talk about what it is, go over questions you need to ask, assessments, the workup itself, and provide specific nursing tips. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. So first, patients present with altered mental status as a result of being confused, not at their baseline level of cognitive ability, or simply because the family noticed that something was just not right. As ER nurses, we are often the first ones to have contact with the patient, so when we must be knowledgeable in the daily conditions that can cause a patient to be altered. As well, we also need to possess the skills to perform a rapid, precise assessment which can include asking the right questions and obtaining obtaining pertinent history obtaining an accurate set of vitals focusing on the abcs and performing a good physical assessment daily conditions that we must be aware of that must be rolled out include brain bleeds hypoglycemia strokes infections like meningitis or even utis in the elderly overdoses malignancies seizures etc the list of possible causes is very long luckily there is a mnemonic that is very helpful in remembering some of the big causes the mnemonic is a e i o u tips so let's start off with the letter A and go down the list. For A, we have alcohol, then down it's epilepsy, infection, overdose, uremia, trauma, insulin, psych, and strokes. So the next time you have a patient with altered mental status and you're struggling to remember the important conditions that are pertinent to being altered, keep in mind the mnemonic A-E-I-O-U tips. Now, Let's briefly discuss the coma cocktail. It is composed of medications that can potentially reverse common causes of a patient being in a coma, right? The misconception is that these medications should be automatically given when a comatose patient arrives in the ER. That is not the case. These medications are not automatically given to comatose patients. These medications are given based on the patient's presentation and scenario, not just blindly given. If the patient has pinpoint pupils, for example, and was found down next to an unknown substance, Narcan may be indicated. Or as an ER nurse, you prioritize checking a point of care glucose for your alter patient and you find that the glucose is low, then dextrose is indicated. Or again, the patient is malnourished, smells of alcohol, and was found down next to empty bottles of alcohol, Thiamine may, may be indicated as some of the treatments for that, right? Then the same principles apply for the flumazenil. Again, is the medication indicated based on the patient's presentation or is there at least suspicion that the medication will be beneficial? With the coma cocktail, it doesn't mean that the medications are going to be automatically uh, given. You need sound judgment and suspicion that the medication will at least have some benefit. Now, as with every patient who presents to the ER, you will focus on the ABCs and get a set of vital signs at first. The key here is that when patients present with altered mental status or, or even comatose and there is minimal, minimal information provided, a lot of useful information and details in regards to why a patient can be altered can be obtained from just the ABCs and the vitals. Important information that can be obtained include whether your patient is ventilating appropriately and, and or hypoxic, whether they are perfusing based on the blood pressure, whether an infection is present based on the temp, the heart rate and the blood pressure, whether their pupils are pain point or their different sizes, whether an arrhythmia is present, whether your patient is pale, has signs of trauma or whether any catheters are present. Again, with the ABCs and a good set of vital signs, you can get a lot of information which can potentially help guide the team as to reasons why the patient may be altered, right? And we can start addressing those uh, from the, from the get-go. Therefore, as an ER nurse, you must gain the skills to accurately and rapidly perform the initial assessment, which includes the vital signs and the ABCs. Now, let's go over important questions that you should be asking. These include, how is the patient different? Or in what way is the patient altered? When did it start? What is Was it gradual or was it sudden? Were they complaining of anything before becoming altered? And you have to know what their baseline. So what is their baseline normally? Did they start any new medications? What medications are they on? And who is in charge of administering them? Is it a family member, a caregiver, or is the patient in charge of taking them themselves? 
Did the patient complain of any recent falls? And more importantly, are they on blood thinners and when they fell? Has this happened before? Have they been altered before? And were there any clues where the patient is coming from? For example, again, were there any empty bottles of alcohol or pill bottles or any other clues that may be helpful? These questions help us in gathering crucial information and clues. For example, again, if it's a gradual decline and the patient is elderly, could it be dementia? If the patient was complaining of pain with urination and is now tacky, febrile, and hypotensive, could they be in shock with the, from a worsening UTI and altered as a result? Or did the patient recently start taking opioid pain medication and is now altered perhaps as a result of taking too much? Again, did they recently fall? They're on blood thinners. Could they have head bleed? Again, these questions help us get additional information that can help guide the team. Now, when performing, we need to perform a more thorough head to toe assessment for patients who present altered or comatose when we have minimal information available. You have to perform a thorough exam to ensure that nothing is missed. You need to get a GCS score and ask the orienta orientation questions so that you have a base lamentation. And if it's not already done by this point, assess their pupils, the clarity of their speech, ensure there's no facial droop or slurring, listen to the lungs, the heart, palpate the pulses, see what, what the cap refill is, check sensation in the face, arms, and extremities. Uh, lower extremities, ensure that the extremities are equal bilaterally in strength. Uh, listen to the bowel sounds and palpate for for tenderness. Is there is their co uh, skin color pale or jaundice? Is there any redness on their skin that may be an infection? Any dialysis, dialysis fistulas or any other catheters coming out of the patient? Again, when patients present altered comatose and there's minimal information provided, you need to do a good thorough head to toe assessment to make sure that no information is missed. Super quick, let's review the differences between dementia, delirium, and psychosis that you as an ER nurse should be aware of. So the cognitive decline with dementia is gradual. It comes on slowly. Now with a delirium, on the other hand, it's sudden. Then dementia gets progressively worse over time. While on the other hand, delirium, it's commonly caused by an underlying condition that if we that we need to identify and fix for it to be resolved, right? So dementia slow and worsens over time while delirium sudden and we need to identify the the cause of it the the issue causing that delirium now with psychosis from my own experiences they experience they uh, exhibit bizarre behavior and experience hallucinations but they are still able to answer those orientation questions appropriately so keep that in mind next time you're trying to differentiate dementia from delirium and psychosis now, let's get into the workup that you may commonly see for altered patients. At the top is the POC glucose because hypoglycemia can easily be reversed. I keep repeating it because it's important. Check a POC glucose for your altered patients. Next is the CMP, CBC, and urine. With the CMP, the team will be able to assess for possible metabolic issues that can affect the patient and cause them to become altered. You'll get your electrolytes, your kidney function, your fluid balance, and a bicarb, which can help assess your patient's acid base status. The CBC helps it looks for infections and or bleeding possible and with the urine several tests can be done like a urinalysis which can help check for an infection and you can do a tox screen that can help us look for certain drugs right and help us uh, see if it's like an overdose and then severe infections and or those in or those of the central nervous system can also affect the patient's mentation right which is why we do the cbc and then you're also going to see most likely a CT, a chest x-ray, and an ECG. The head CT is going to help rule out brain bleeds and other brain pathologies that can cause the patient to become altered. The chest x-ray can help for, uh, assess for pneumonia, cardiomegaly, fluid overload, among other things. And the ECG will help ensure that an arrhythmia isn't the cause of the patient's change in condition or any other uh, thing that we can see on the EKG, like a uh, like a STEMI or NSTEMI, which can affect eventually perfusion and be uh, and the patient can become altered as a result. And if indicated on the patient's presentation and scenario, they uh, and a VBG and ammonia, a TSH and blood cultures may also be ordered. And then finally, if there is suspicion, a lumbar puncture may be performed by the team to help assess for an infection of the CSF fluid. Now, remember. 
For nursing tips, as with any other patient, you're going to need to get them on the monitor, get IV access in order to give medications and draw labs, right? So ensure you get a good set of vitals and that you initially focus on the ABCs. Now, for specific tips, even though I've said it several times already, you need to get a POC blood glucose. Don't forget to, to get contact information for the family from EMS or simply if the family is leaving, get their info just in case you need to contact them. Now, in regards to safety, and if the patient seems like they're going to be trying to get out of bed, place the patient in front of the nursing station so you can chart or do what you have to do, but there's still someone at least keeping an eye on them. I say that because even though I can say, hey, get a one-to-one -one sitter, but a lot of hospitals have staffing issues, so that's not going to happen most likely. So put them in front of the nursing station if you're able to, and or at least make frequent rounds. And if your facility has them, you can get a portable computer and do whatever charting you have to do in front of the patient's room just so you can keep a good eye on them. And if you're unable to implement any of these safety measures, make sure that you contact the team um, and your provider so you can start coming up with a good plan. Uh, also, with this in mind, keep in mind that your patient may be just trying to get out of bed because they have to use the restroom. So make sure that's not the issue. And again, keep a quiet, calm environment so that they can stay um, resting and not try to get out of bed and try to uh, perhaps hurt themselves. Now, when you place an IV, do your best to place it in the forearm so that you do not have to worry about them bending their arm if your patient is altered and not able to follow commands, right? And finally, when you are new, just ensure that you're learning from others. Keep track of what the other nurses do when they get new altered patients, right? What kind of questions are they asking? What kind of things do they focus on? And the same thing for the providers, right? Learn from them what kind of questions are they also asking and how are they guiding the conversation based on the answers to those questions and how and what part of the assessment do they focus on mostly now thank you for watching until the end i hope you got something out of the video if you would like to support the channel and see more videos like this one on a regular basis please consider joining the channel as a member it is 1.99 per month and if not again if you're not able to i still really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video until the end if you learned something today and would like to help support the channel, please consider getting the mini book I put together on Amazon. The link will be in a pinned comment below. As always, you should continue nurturing your curiosity and continue learning daily. With that in mind, please watch my other videos and I've also listed my favorite ER nursing related books in the description text and in the comments as well. So when you get a chance, please check them out. And if you've learned something recently, while at work, that may be helpful to other new ER nurses, please consider sharing it in the comments so that we can all benefit and help each other out. Thank you. And as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive.